Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Tammy Manis and Richard Foster are here with me today with lots to talk about. We're going to get our teeth right into uh, the nominees for the Championship League 1 and League 2. We'll be going live to the Hilton to speak to Kerry Pollock, our reporter, just shortly and get a little flavour of the players who've been nominated in the Championship. We'll also discuss uh, Sean Maloney and that sacking. Mark McGee's come out with an unusual usual statement and we'll discuss that. Um, we'll also hear uh, what Neil Doncaster has to say on the VAR being brought in mid-season. We'll get the boys' thoughts on that. Uh, and Rangers, well, it looks as if we're heading in the right direction with Rangers and the SPFL. Uh, the SPFL have managed to change that fixture. Rangers are appreciative of it and Motherwell Rangers will go ahead on a Saturday giving Rangers that little bit of extra time uh, to prepare for Leipzig in the Europa League semi-final. So, um, lots to talk about, lots to get our teeth into and at the tail end of but we might even roll in Liverpool thumping Manchester United as well. So, Tam, the story is ongoing. We're about to hear from Ron Gordon, but Sean Maloney sacked um, at beggar's belief. I'll, I will start with you on this point, um, which is, is there enough time, 19 games, for a manager? No, no, it's not, it's not enough time. It's, there's nowhere near it. Especially in a January window as well. You're not getting a, the summer window's a lot easier to get players in and out. A January window is really tough because teams don't want really to let the better players go. You know, want to let the players go that they want to let go. Um, he's been hamstrung by injuries. There was a point at Hibs where, where I, I remember writing down there was 13 players out injured. You know, they sold Martin Boyle, they didn't replace him. Kevin Nisbet done his cruciate. You know, uh, Dodge done his Achilles. He's, he's still out injured, so he, he had nothing really up top. I feel sorry for him, I feel he's not had enough time, but listen, the decision's been made now. Um, Ron, obviously you're going to hear from Ron Gordon uh, in a minute about that, and he'll have his reasons for doing it, you know, so I don't think the Hibs would, would have been dragged into a relegation battle, but he's obviously seen it, that he's made a mistake with Sean Maloney, you know, and he's, he's cut the cord quickly, and he's wanting to look ahead and get an experienced manager in. OK, the Executive Chairman Ron Gordon's been speaking today. Here's his thoughts on the appointment of uh, Sean Maloney. Yeah, this is Sean's first first coaching job as a, as a professional manager. Um, and, you know, we were excited about his, his pedigree, his experience, um, but there was a risk. And, and certainly I had that same conversation with Sean himself. This is a risk for the club. Uh, but we, we, we made the decision, and I, and I would venture to say, um, in retrospect, looking back, um, you know, yeah, we probably rushed that. Um, the timing wasn't necessarily the best. Well, uh, so they rushed the decision uh, to appoint uh, Sean Maloney. Well, I, I will throw this to you, Richard, uh, first of all. If it was a rushed appointment, um, why is Sean Maloney suddenly brought over and offered the incentive of minimum 18 months and to leave behind a higher paid job at Belgium to take a reduced salary uh, and obviously leave a job which had stability for a fair few uh, years and go to Hibs on the basis that he was only getting 19 games, why would you do it? Well, you wouldn't if, if you knew that's all you were getting because, as Tam rightly says, it's, it's nowhere near enough time. Um, I think he's came in, he, he's wanted to change the way they play, which I think is, is straight away, you know, you need that to be a success quickly. You know, I think if you come into a club and you work with what you've got first and slowly kind of get your way of playing into the team. But he pretty much came in and they changed <coughs> quite drastically. Um, they weren't as, as as attacking, they were more kind of ball retention. And I don't think it, was, it wasn't it was as easy on the eye as Hibs usually are. Um, but I think if you come in and make a big change like that, it's got to work pretty quickly. It seems to me, and you know, this is only my opinion, that it seems to me that something's clearly happened. There's been a some sort of argument fallout behind the scenes because otherwise, they would still back him, I think, because they would recognise that even if it was a rushed appointment in their in their eyes, he still hasn't had enough time. But they've maybe looked at it and thought, what happened in January? We maybe don't want to give him the funds to, to bring in his own players in the summer. No, he um, doesn't bring in the players. The, the players are brought in by committee. This is not a made-up statement. This is on a web... He has some... No, the, the, no, no. The players <laughs> are, are brought in because Ben Kensel is already quoted, and Ron Gordon, and Ian Gordon that the committee is working off the Brentford blueprint, which is basically, they all discuss it, but it's done by committee, and they get players in, and the coach just coaches them. Now, even if Sean might look at it and say, okay, here's my opinion, 
These are the players they deal with. Some of them, I can tell you, are overinflated wages for the quality that they are. So so he doesn't have like, it's not like he has a dis- deciding say, the vote. It's based on a committee on a Brentford blueprint, which is the quotes are on uh, anyway. You know, I'm, I'm you not disputing, I'm just, I'm just, that's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous because then you, d- you can't bring in a manager then who has a specific way that he wants to play because those players might not fit the criteria that he needs. So basically, if that's the way you're going to do it with the committee, you basically say to the manager, manage these players that we bring in in the best way possible, but you can't then bring in someone like Sean who clearly has a blueprint of the way he wants to play because those players, we've seen it already, they don't fit. You know, they, they don't have players who are good enough at the back on the ball. They bring in like B- Rocky Bashiri, don't think he's been anywhere near good enough. Mick Mikkelsen up top, Young kid, you know, learning his trade. Um, it's it's harsh to throw him in there, but the three it was the only three signings he made in January. You know, he, he's he's not been given enough time. He's not been given enough enough signings. They've no replaced Boyle, um, and that the way the way I sign in players. And now I might be really naive here because I'm, you know, I'm I'm kind of young for a coach, I suppose, um, coach mindset, but. That, to me, is, is absolutely bonkers. Now, I'll qualify that by saying, Ruffy, that Sean Maloney could actually suggest two or three players and they might say, OK, mm-hmm. we'll give you them. But he didn't get a transfer window to suddenly say, here's my Sean Maloney-style players that I want. Get them off this list. No, well, first of all, I think it was a rushed uh, move to sack Jack Ross. You know, I think that's the first uh, thing they've got to be questioned on. And, and obviously, Sean, when his first job as a manager, I, I, I agree with Richard to a wee bit. I think he's went in there... He, he's been told this is the way it's gone, and because it's his first job, he's went along with it. But I'm waiting to see what Has Sean. He's gone along with it on the basis that, by the way, we're going to give you 18 months to get this going. Well, I don't know that, but I, I, that. I'm waiting till Sean Maloney makes a statement because I, I, I agree with Richard. I think something. <laughs> on the fence again. I think something has <laughs> happened. Tell, I'm telling you, he, right. he's, he, but, he's taken the job on the basis that he's got a starting point of 18 months to implement right. his ideas. OK, well, they're wrong then in sacking him. But what's happened is he's only won one game in 13. They've hauled him in and said, look, it's no work for you. And this is the way we're still going to do it. And I think Sean has said, well, I might have agreed with you at the beginning, but look what's happened with me not bringing my own players in, so I'm not having it. And I think something's happened behind the scenes that they've came to some disagreement. And I know it says sacked, but I, I think Sean's had a big part to say, like, I'm not happy with what... No, he hasn't had anything to say. Well, I don't know that. They're, still waiting, they're, still, they're still waiting, to do the, they're still waiting to, to do the deal. Well, so, well so let's he's wait gone. and see what he says. So he's gone. Uh, we're in a situation where we're waiting to see what Sean Maloney's going to say. But as I look at it right now, and I look at the, 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 the situation, if you, why would you leave that type of job, Tam, to come there without having a commitment to say, look, we'll give you the 18 months, OK, if you buy into our Brentford blueprint, fine and dandy. But, there's, I mean, I wrote a column on Saturday. You wrote one on Monday for the Daily Record. They sold his best player in February, after the window had gone. Mm-hmm. So they sold his best player, banked the £3 million in money. The players they brought in, in that transfer window, some of them just not up to the mark. Certainly not the mark of uh, Boyle, who they've sold. And he's had injuries. So there's no slack cut for him whatsoever. No, there hasn't been. There hasn't been. There hasn't been. I don't, I don't think any... Kind of situation where they've said, "Listen, this is uh, you've had too many injuries. You're, you've lost your best player," and I just, I, I really think it's harsh. You know, you, when you leave, you leave a job like that in Belgium, you know, and, and you come into Hibs, I think you should be getting minimum two windows. Uh, I think any manager with assault should be getting two windows. Four months, you know, in a January window, it's it's no it's no enough. Um, I, I don't think Hibs are in any danger of getting relegated, but I just think there's panic buttons are getting pressed. Same when Jack Ross gets sacked, you know, they, they were in a bad run, but panic button, you know, Jack Ross done a great job, he's third in the league this, the, pre- the season before, semi-final with the cup, cup final, you know, bat one bad run, he's out the door, so, listen, it's it's one of the ones where I, I, I don't agree with it, and, you know, I just have to wait and see what happens, but I think any manager, and that, whether that's Hibs or any other club, you should be getting more than four months. Yeah, I have to say, Ruffy, I'm dying to know who's going to take it. I mean, they're talking about yeah. Malky Mackay. Malky Mackay won't take it under those rules. Well, if the brief is that is the rules, you're, you're looking at a coach who's just desperate to come in, and they've got one there already. That boy that's at the academy. The Steve boy who's doing anything, Stephen Keane. He fits the bill. He, he'll be more than happy to come in, you know, and take that on, because that's what he does. I think they're, using, they're using the fact that Hibs are a huge club, aren't they? Say, so this, is, this is a huge opportunity. Here's this job. You'll be the manager of sorts. 
but you are actually know the manager because you don't pick your own players and you're just coached what you just have to coach what they they tell you to bring in or they bring in that that to I me. don't think an experienced manager would stand for that. No. I think they maybe went for Sean Maloney because they thought they could maybe manip- not manipulate him, but you could get him to come come round. Because of the it. opportunity, because of the size of the club. Of the opportunity for Sean wanted that wanted that as his first job. Yeah, you know, but if I you don't think like, an experienced manager would would, would 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 stand for that. I'd be gobsmacked. But if you if you are even in a business sense, which Ron Gordon and his son Ian will obviously be looking at as well. You're probably looking. You're saying, to "Self, look at the turnout for the semi-final. Not great. Hibs fans not buying into what his blueprint is at the moment. Season ticket sales. We. I mean, these are things that have obviously been put out there before Sean Maloney's had a word to say. But season ticket sales not great at the moment. Poor walk-up numbers. Apparently, the manner of Sean with his staff, which I am finding hard to believe. You're probably talking about one of the most well-mannered boys. If you look at things historically." about someone and the type of person they are if they have got a poor relationship with people it comes out long before they take a job on other people will say Chinese whispers your own relationship with somebody would suggest Sean Maloney's arrogant you know dismissive of people that that's never come out I've never got, I've never no, I've never had that from him as well when I played with him with Scotland 21s a long time ago and I never got that from him you know he was an arrogant type he, that could be just be hearsay but you know the, the the main things you just mentioned. There are big things for the club. You know, Ron Gordon and and, and his son. They, they've put in a lot of money in the hubs. You know, they're, they're doing done the stadium up. They've got the big screens. You know, they're doing the hospitality up. If there's three <laughs> three thousand season tickets getting sold, then they've got to say why is that? And that the, the reason why that is is the product on the pitch. So that's where they're coming from. Um, and the product on the pitch has got to be better for the fans to come back. So, but then you've got to give a manager time to get the product right in the pitch. So it's just it's just a big vicious circle at the minute. And if they keep hiring. And, Firing, then it's just going to be a, a vicious what, circle. What the criteria is, like you, for the for the players they sign, who who's who's watching these players then? Who's who's suggesting like if you're so it's a committee. So obviously the manager has some sort of input, but you could get guys here who are businessmen. They're no football guys. Saying, "Oh, we're going to sign this player." <laughs> you know, what I mean, it just seems to me it seems absolutely ridiculous. And like you say, no experienced manager is going to go in there and go, "Yeah, I want to be told which players I can sign and which players I need to, you know, which players I need to play and all that." I just, I don't think was there too much wrong with the way Hibs was run before. You know, and, and they had success third in the league, cup finals, semi finals. Um, it seems to me to be a, a strange thing to come in and change that and and basically say to a manager here, "You deal with the, this mob. We're just going to." Hurdle them together for you, and, and you go in there and huddle them together. Sorry, and you go in there and, and put them on the pitch and make them play. Well, uh, this story is going to rumble on sooner or later. Um, Sean Maloney is going to have his say on it as well. Um, but we wait to see what that is. What the Hibs fans have to look at now is okay, next decision is critical. Oh, it's huge. I mean, listen, if you. If, I don't think, you know, guys like Malky McKay get mentioned, Derek McInnes, I don't think they begin and. and and do that with Hibs. I don't think they're going to accept people dictating to them who they could sign and who they couldn't sign. You know, they want total control, these guys, over who they're signing and who they're bringing in because at the end of the day, it's their head in the block. So I don't see that, but I don't see Hibs going down a, a Scott Brown route or a Kevin Thompson route now because they're just the exact same thing with Sean Maloney and it's no work. So I think they'll go experience, but who who experience is going to take that job? Is, is Hibs that big a carrot that they go, oh, I'll just take it anyway? Or are they going to set the net wider? You know, in terms of Europe, America, you know, and bring somebody in. So, listen, it's a big job for someone. The expectations at Hibs have always been very, very high, um, sometimes too high, in my opinion. So, it'll be interesting to see who they, go, who they get next. But David Gray's got a great opportunity now, Peter, to, to win the last five games. You know, he's in the bottom six, perfect opportunity for him to win the last five and then throw his name in a hat. Yeah, absolutely. We'll wait to see um, if he indeed is allowed to take charge to the end of the season. They might be they might be looking at it on a game by game basis, Ruffy. Now, no, well, we spoke about American owners before. You know, they seem to come over here. They have their own ideas of how how they operate. We we see over in America and American football and the the basketball. It's all franchise franchise stuff. You know, they 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 have the ability to move people about, and maybe they think. They can do that in football, but it's always evident it doesn't work uh, over here with us. It might work in America, but it doesn't work here. OK, uh, give us your thoughts on that. We'll read out some of your messages if you're a Hibs fan. Um, lots to discuss in the nominees uh, for 
Championship, League One and League Two shortly, the PFA Awards, which will take place on the 1st of May. Um, so we've discussed Sean Maloney. Um, what about uh, the VAR? Um, because Neil Doncaster says mid-season VR, um, the change won't cause issues for the SPFL. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, do you know what's great about it? The whole of the SPL, uh, SPFL, whether it's club bases, owners, um, chief executives, you name it, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of spin that comes out that you just have to sift through. Yeah, I mean, it's the one thing you always get in Scotland is there always something happen there's always some controversy somewhere someone disagrees with something that somebody else says and for him to actually say the words that he doesn't think it will make any impact to me he must be buttoned up the back because there will be of course there will because there will be things that happen in the early part of the season when referees will make mistakes that will cost goals or penalties or no goals and then those teams then won't get the break the other way when the VAR comes in, because that's what the VAR is in to stop those mistakes. So you know what's going to happen next season. The league is going to finish. One team is going to win it or get promoted or get, um, it's not promoted, sorry, or going to get into Europe by a couple of points. And then we're going to look back through the season and go, oh, look, look at September. That was a goal that they shouldn't have had or that was a goal that they could have had or a red card. And it's going to cause issues. Just if it's not going to be in for the start of the season. Just wait until the next season, surely. Yeah, well, Neil Doncaster said they've been told VR won't be ready uh, for the start of the season, so that's why it's coming in halfway through. Now, I don't get that. It's ready everywhere else. Uh, I totally agree with Richard. I mean, there's going to be fans moaning, you know, about decisions. It could be big decisions, you know, relegation, you know, promotion, winning the title, and you're bringing it halfway through. It's just going to open up a whole can of worms. And Neil Doncaster isn't the most popular person anyway, <laughs> and that is just going to make it worse. I, I, I don't see why you wouldn't just leave it until the, the start of the following season after the World Cup. I yeah. think that'd be fairer. I, I know everybody's throwing their money in. Is it just the Premiership that are getting it? Yes. So everybody else is throwing 70, 80 grand in and they're only having to use it if it's, they're in a Scottish Cup or something? Yeah, um, which will take place in the, the, the semi-finals and finals, but mm. with a view to it being used more often uh, in the earlier rounds. Yeah. Are the other teams yeah. paying just, for it? No, you're missing the <laughs> point here. <laughs> Ruffy's just firing in at, by the way, why are we all paying for it when we're not getting it? <laughs> That's pay, Ruffy's really point. Other teams don't need to pay for it. Yeah, yeah they do in a sliding, sliding scale. scale. Yeah. First and second division teams uh, well, the, the Teams in the championship down should have slid right off the edge of the cliff and not have to pay it. Exactly. That's ridiculous. Same as what? What was the even point of them voting for it? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> you have to pay for it. Um, um, I mean, would it <laughs> Just would, get yourself in the Premier League, boys. That's yeah, what exactly. he's need, eh? I was going to say to you, would it, have a, yeah, would, the for the help. would it have had an impact on the 19 games that you said you battered the teams and lost? <laughs> there's, there's plenty well, of decisions there's, 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 there's plenty of decisions in there. There you go. Particularly the one with Richard. Penalty kick. Yeah, was it? They've been sorted out. Yeah, okay, there you are. I knew you two would jump in with both feet. Brilliant. It's halfway up my back. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, apart from anything else, VAR overall, I think we're all of the opinion, Richard. Yes, great. Bring it in uh, and it's it will help the referees, regardless of the fact that we've been highly critical of some. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and I think the referees will welcome it because it takes a, a bit of pressure off them because, you know, we, we sit and watch games and we see replays three, four, five times and still can't be definitive with their answer and they need to make decisions, you know, in real time at real speed. So it'll definitely help them. It's not, you know, it's not the, the cure-all. It's not going to get rid of all the problems. There's still going to be mistakes made because it's still interpretation. It's still people looking at a, a screen and, and, and try to work it out. And But I just hope the way it's implemented, I hope it's... It's not as slow as it certainly has been sometimes there in England, and it's not three, four minutes where you're just players are standing about and you've kind of half celebrated the goal, but then you're waiting to see if you know somewhere in the play somebody handled it or whatever the rules are going to be. I just hope that it doesn't slow the game down too much, and I hope that they use common sense with the offside. Yeah, this, this, this half an inch offside is a. That's a big one. That's a big one for me, Peter. The offside. That's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be looked at properly. You, yeah, you, you cannot be having well, you, you hope offside. that we benefit from what they've been doing down, down the road. You, you hopefully it's moved yeah, on. The teething problems at the start, yeah. didn't yeah. you? You remember the boy if he leads pointed, you know, the, the through ball. Uh, and uh, he's, not his hand or whatever it was was offside. They've, they've changed that now, haven't they? Yeah, they've changed you it can't now, yeah. your hand. But still, yeah, you know, people are, you know, you see that some of them and they stop it and it's so, it's, you're literally talking yeah. inches. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous, and it, that's what slows the game down because it takes so long to pinpoint it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, 
Now, other issues that you may want to talk about, there's lots of I mean, it's incredible the things that are happening today, Ruffy. Um, Rangers obviously have um, thanked the SPFL. What? Um, for <laughs> shut at you for for moving the date of the league game against Motherwell ahead of the Europa League semi final, which is which is fantastic because Rangers wanted that extra twenty four hours, and I think Motherwell SPFL well done. If we could only could get more of that on a regular basis, but it's been switched. It'll help Giovanni Van Bronckhorst for a, a huge game. Yeah, but listen, it's, it's, it's a big game for Rangers, but it's also for Scottish football. You know, in Scottish football, you want your, your teams to do well in Europe. And it's common sense, I think, thankfully, you know, both Rangers and SPFL, you know, have came to an agreement. Motherwell as well have got to be applauded, you know, they've moved it as well. So, listen, great. I think that gives Rangers an extra, what, 24 hours to, to prepare for the game and they'll need that, you know, because they're up against a top side. So, listen, fingers crossed Rangers can get, get in the final. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Rangers thank to the SPFL as well as Police Scotland, who've got to be... Um, obviously asked about this and Sky there's so many people involved in the actual decision of moving it Ruffy yeah I mean it's, it's it's a move forward I mean we keep hearing about if there's German sides or whatever they, they get a whole week you know they take a fixture out yeah. uh, before their, their game so it's any a, sympathy for the Motherwell fans Ruffy they're a wee bit miffed at the late notice of the change no not at all I'm sure they all want to come to that game it's a, it's a big game against one of the big sides you don't want to miss that so they might have a wee grump the now, but I think in the end of the day, they'll all be there. Yeah, OK. Um, of course, there's still two uh, ongoing issues that we hope can soon be resolved with Rangers and the SPFL. The Cinch deal, which uh, I think is crucial. Um, and also, um, they've got a, a, another deal that I, I wasn't aware of, but I, I read it in the Daily Record, um, with a, a sports company, one of these digital companies. It's like the trading cards thing. Yeah. For the um, they seem to have done a deal with the rest of the Premiership clubs, but Rangers would need to be a separate one. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It's petty, isn't it? It's no, it's not. It's just don't do the deal unless you're doing the deal for all. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Well, I, I totally agree with you, but I just I still think, you know, why can Rangers not get on board and the rest of the, the other 11 teams can get on board? Yeah. Well, um, of course, Rangers uh, obviously have got their own deal at the moment, but I. I think collectively, if you're going to do deals, I mean, this is the one thing where I do embrace the likes of a Ron Gordon um, and uh, John Nelms and anybody else, Lachlan Cameron, that we were speaking to on this programme. Embrace the American attitude to the marketing, to the promotion, to the advertising of the game. I think they're brilliant at it. We should do that, Richard. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine in any business, you know, if you look at football as a business, you, you look at who does who do things the best for any in any given aspect of certain businesses and, and the one thing is that American business owners certainly s seem to do far better than we do is advertising mm. is promotion I mean how long have, have you know and you, you you always check me here on here but we put the game down in Scotland not on this show but you know as, as a collective we tend to put the game down you never hear that from 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 america with the mls or the usl it's always promotion try to big up the game which then attracts sponsors so for these certain things you're right do the deal you know but don't do the deal till everyone's on board but similarly as tam said rangers just get on board with the deal whatever the sticking point is work it out and then like you say embrace that side of the game because more adver uh, advertisement for our game is is always going to be a good thing and the more money that we can pull into the game is always going to be a good thing for Scottish me, football. Me and Tam have been to America, it's a be all and end all. You, you have to do everything the, the sponsor wants. Mm. And, and that's it, it's not even, an, it's not even a, an argument, it's you go there, you go there, he'll be there, you go and do that and that, that's the way we should be as well. It'd be great if we'd been to America, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. damn it. I've, I've never been to America. It's just amazing. <laughs> what else is happening in America, Robbie? Do, do they play with a round ball? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Richard. Um, anyway, um, what's another thing we are good at in, <laughs> in Scottish football is comedy. And I have to say, I had to look twice at Mark McGee. Uh, this is what he, uh, he said he's turned off the heating and he's starting a diet in a bid to save Dundee from the drop. Um, this is good stuff. There are two things I'm doing this week to focus on is getting the win. The first is I've gone on a diet. So I'm, so I'm hungry all the time. I can then ask myself, why am I hungry? Uh, and I'm hungry because there is a big game on Saturday. Uh, the second thing I'm doing, I, I won't be using any heating, so I'll be cold. And I'll ask myself, why am I cold? And I can say, because of the game on Saturday. It's the principle of it, because I'm asking my own players to make this game as important in their own minds. I want them to focus on the game, and this is what I'm doing to make sure they are focused. Um, listen, Mark is a 
Ruffy, you know him, I know him. It's a great wind up, it's a great noise up. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's the summer now and it's a wee bit warmer. So if anybody said that statement <laughs> in December, everybody would be saying, You're having a laugh, it's freezing. But uh, <laughs> it's not. And every manager has, he's got a wee bit of publicity. Everybody's talking about the game and he's talking up his players and he knows how massive the game is and any publicity and, and if it lifts the players as a wee giggle in the dressing room or whatever, you know, it could only be good. Maybe he's trying to take the pressure off his players. Maybe he's trying to get them, everybody talking about that rather than mm-hmm. Dundee having to win the game. Maybe it's a master stroke for Mark McGee. Well, listen, if, if it is, if it is brilliant, you know, I don't care what they use. I mean, it's not, it's not something you'd beat Mark over the head with. It's great. It brings a smile to people's face. Um, they haven't won a league game since February. We're just looking and wondering, can they, can they turn it around? I know you, you don't think they're going to be able to do it. No, I don't think they can turn it around. Um, I, th- I just think they're just in such a bad place at the moment. They just can't win games, um, which is obviously why they're where they are, and, and, and not a good thing going into the last five games of the season. But you know, Tam's right. Maybe this is, he's just trying to divert the pressure. You know, you've seen it. You know, I think Mourinho, Ferguson, the top managers, they've all been brilliant at, at doing it. And and maybe Mark's thinking, well, nothing else I've done has worked. So maybe if I go on a diet and switch your heating off it, that'll work at the weekend. Yeah, Ruffy. Just, Does he say anything about not having a drink to Saturday? No, he doesn't. Say, <laughs> doesn't mention anything about that. <laughs> uh, I mean, Ruffy, do you think that would work for the PLZ team? Have we got a? We've got to turn the heating off and then start dieting as well. Is that the way ahead? <laughs> Put the heating on. The dieting might work. Yeah, the absolutely. dieting might work. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, Ruffy. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, he doesn't think they're going to do it. I don't know, Tam. I, I, I'm switching here. I think Dundee are going to really put the cat among the pigeons at the weekend. Need to win. They win on Saturday. They've got a chance. If they don't win, even a draw, they're done. So that's it. They need to win. I, th- I thought it would have been if it had been. The cup games had been last week, I think they had a better chance because being on a high for getting the draw against Dundee United the next week, the players would still have been in a high, training would have been magnificent, but that's sort of a in the past now, so <coughs> you know, you saw what happened when they scored the second goal, the whole place erupted and mm. you can carry that on to the next game, but that was a fortnight ago. I, mean, yeah. I would caveat my opinion with the fact that so, because you said caveat. No, no, just oh. because you're changing. I know caveat. I'm no, no. just waiting to see if you're going to do a U-turn <laughs> um, on your caveat. No, 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 my opinion. <laughs> <Ricky. Yeah. laughs> my opinion on Dundee is the I same. Done, done what I was going to say is, my opinions last week were that Rangers could have went home at half time against Braga, that Celtic were going to win the cup game, and Aaron Ramsey was one of the was the best player in the league on form. So, yeah. my opinions don't really matter for much. <laughs> That's what I mean. No, they do, they do, because what happens is by the time you open your gob, it takes the heat off me and Tam. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a game Sunday going, just have a really good game. Then he came off and I was like, oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. And whether he appears or not, it's uh, only a matter of time. Anyway, thanks to uh, lots of people who've been uh, talking to us about Mark McGee's comments. It's all good. And the Rangers fans uh, talking um, about, obviously, the deals and the conflicts of interest here and there. Oh, I'm delighted to say, by the way, we've waited such a long time. And finally, finally, um, you know, we get to know what's happening with these with these awards because <laughs> Kerry's found a place where there's actually a signal in so Glasgow. Like That's well. magnificent. It, looks, it does look as if there's a hurricane. Um, Kerry Pollock is with us. You've had a busy old day there with the championship nominees. Definitely, Peter. Championship and League One and League Two nominees have been here today and I've been speaking about the four nominations for the championship. Yeah, of course, um, you know, Richard and Ruffy have got uh, an interest in this, Kerry. They're dying to know um, if their man is in the box seat. Of course, you did have a chat with them. Um, first of all, Scott Tiffany, what was on his mind about, yeah, I mean, he's obviously delighted to be nominated, we know that. He was really excited to be nominated for Player of the Year for the Championship. When he was asked how the season was going, he said that he feels he's been playing really well and feels at this stage of the season it's all about luck, especially if this will want to get a place in the playoffs. Part of Faso have been here for a while and I think what happened to us getting relegated to League One, I think a lot of people would disagree with that, but we've dusted ourselves down. We've done, we've been promoted and hopefully we go back to back promotions and I think that'll be a special one. Yeah, um, Kerry, he's well happy um, getting nominated and like Richard and Ruffy here, he wants to see uh, Thistle uh, back in the top flight. Good to know that he hasn't let go of the fact that he's were relegated wrongly. He's mentioned yeah. that. He's he's just towing the party line, Ruffy, eh? 
Quite rightly as well. Yeah. You know, we're, we're still hunting. You know, you can't get away from the way we were treated. But you like him. He's been good this year. Oh, time. fantastic. He, if if I was a spectator and I knew he was playing, he would he would somebody I'd pay my money in and, and watch. He, there's a lack of players like him who get you off your seat and do something very, very special. Doesn't work all the time, but he's prepared to keep at it. And uh, if I was a defender, I wouldn't want to be playing against him. You think he can play at a higher level? Yeah, I think if he if he tidies up a little bit with it in terms of his final product, um, and I think just kind of shows a bit more discipline in terms of his position, and he, he he wants to wander and go and get on the ball, and I think I think sometimes that allows teams to mark him more easily because if he stays out in the wing and one v one against defenders, there's no one in the league, and I don't think there's not there's many in the in the top league that can that can handle him for pace. Yeah, uh, Kerry, no surprise that uh, uh, Kyle Lafferty is in the air of the Kilmarnock striker. He's been prolific at times. Uh, what was he saying? He also said that Kilmarnock have had a great season this season and that he made it clear that his priorities lay somewhere else other than being up for winning Player of the Year for the Championship. He said that he's looking forward to Friday for their game against our broth. Sitting here being nominated for Player of the Year and recognised from fellow players in the Championship, obviously I'm delighted on a personal point of view, but I didn't come back to Kilmarnock to hit personal targets or get nominated or win Player of the Year the year in the championship it's I came back to win the league with Kilmarnock and that's first and foremost anything else comes with it is a bonus for me and bonus for the club There are a couple of uh, our broth players no surprise just before we get to them um, Tom Lafferty I mean some of the goals he scored have been brilliant No he's been he's been a difference I think I think he's obviously bringing Derek McInnes in was huge but I think bringing Lafferty in uh, his goals particularly at home uh, won them some big games and the key for them was getting them on a, a contract for six months because he always does well on a six month contract <laughs> but like myself yeah absolutely um, Kerry a broth huge game on uh, Friday it's almost win or bust for them on the uh, battle for the for the championship but there's there's two players I think that Dick Campbell will be well pleased that they, they are in with a chance of winning player of the year Yep, two of both players up for Championship Player of the Year. They are Michael McKenna. Oh, Thomas O'Brien that has been no, no, nominated for Player of the Year for the Championship. Yeah, um, but Thomas O'Brien, Michael McKenna. Give us a wee insight, Richard. I think, I mean, McKenna's stats are... A phenomenal this season. I think he's 13 goals, um, and I, I don't know how many assists, but from from midfield, and he just he, he does he plays the position so well. His timing of his runs into the box um, are great. He just kind of always looks to run off the back of the, the midfielders that are marking him. Um, he's he's got composure, good good quality when he gets in there. Um, I think you could have picked, to be honest, I think you could have picked a number of the, the both players, and they would have all deserved to be in there. O'Brien again, he's. He, their defensive record, just he just loves defending. I think he's, he's you know, we, we as a team throw a lot of balls into the box, and the times that we've played against them, they just they just rebound back out, and, and typically from him and the guy little <coughs> plays in there beside him as well. And um, they've had a fantastic season. Testament to, to each and every one of them that they're still in for the title with, with two games to go. But I think you know, without being biased towards Tiff, I think probably McKenna would be my would be my player of the season. I think. Yeah, here's what McKenna had to say today at the Hilton. I said after four or five games into the season, I thought we'd, we'd be up there because we had played two or three of the better teams in the league and we had like, comfortably beat, like, sort of beat them 3-1 and 3-0 and kept us parting in Dunfermline. They were two of the favourites to, to go up. So I felt after that, the way we were playing, um, because it's our third season in the Championship, we're maybe believing ourselves a bit more that now that we've been there for three years. But uh, we still not done anything yet. yet. Who's winning it on Friday, Tom? You know, Kamalik. Kamalik. Kamalik won it. Yeah. I think they've sold out the stadium. I think I fancy Kamalik strong. I think they'll do. It. They'll finish the job. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Kerry, you've also been speaking to Thomas O'Brien. What was what was on his mind? Yep. Thomas O'Brien was extremely excited for being up for Player of the Year. He compared our both making it into the Premiership to Leicester winning the Premier League down in England. He said it might even just be that bit bigger if they can get there. Um, there's a great buzz. I think, like I say, nobody expected it. Obviously, it's kind of 
stuff you've not seen before in um, a part-time club going for the championship to get in the top league in Scotland so uh, yeah probably every club except Kilmarnock is uh, rooting for us. You how they go, who do you think is going to win Ruffy? Tiff I hope. Yeah, tiff. No, who do you think is going to win our broth or, or broth? Oh, or broth. A, a draw. A draw? A draw yeah. Okay there you are. I'm going to say our broth. Okay, um, Kerry, just before you go, we've enjoyed watching you because it looks as if it's a Force 9 gale outside the Hilton and uh, you, could join, you could join a rock band at any minute because the, the, hair, the hair's been blasted all over the place. It's been, it's been a joy, but before you go, uh, there's also League 1 and League 2 nominees as well, so it's going to be a gala event on the 1st of May and the reason why Ke Kerry's just jumped out of shot, it's windy there, Kerry. <laughs> Just a bit, my paper almost flew out my hand there. <laughs> yeah, League One and League Two as well um, are, are, are going to be uh, at the gala affair on the 1st of May. Of course, yep. So the nominees for League One are Dylan Easton of Airdrie, Rory McAllister, Mitchell McGinnison and Harry Mellon, all from Cove Rangers for League Two. Jamie Barjonis from Kelty Hearts, Joe Cardell from Kelty Hearts, Owen Moxon from Annan and Michael Tidsner from Kelty Harps. Um, okay, thanks to Kerry, who's uh, doing a grand job out there. A few familiar names, Tam, I have to say. We Joe Cardo still strutting his stuff. There's always a place for somebody with a good touch. Ah, he's a good player. Always has been a good player. Plenty of ability in, you know, that, at that level, League Two. You know, he, he cruised up, cruised that level. He could probably still play League One and even Championship. OK, thanks to Kerry for uh, the insight into what was happening out there at the PFA uh, nominees for Championship League 1 and League 2. And we will have updates from Kerry later on this week because uh, we're going to find out the nominees for the Premiership as well. There'll be Player of the Year, Manager of the Year. There'll also be Goal of the Season. Kerry will be right across that. Um, so that's basically <coughs> a sum up of it. Who do you think is your Player of the Year? If you're a Championship fan... Uh, give us your nominee for Player of the Year. Who do you think it's going to be in the League 1 and League 2? Who's going to win the big game on Friday, which we're looking forward to, Kilmarnock against Arbroath. I'm going to have to side with Kelly on this one. I think they might just edge it, but then what do we know, Ruffy? We've been, <laughs> we've been, call we've been calling games wrongly for the last couple of weeks, haven't we? Yeah, I and mean, you're still suffering for, what, was it two years ago at the Hibs Hearts game? Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the way it goes on. I like to tell yeah, everybody. I like yeah. to tell everybody how well, I'm doing that. Uh, actually, the Hibs fans remind me constantly about it. I mean, it's 2016. I mean, you're two nothing up at Tyne Castle. At least I never. At least I never only won the cup. So that was a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> You must have been oh, the way I fight, you weren't even a goal winner, no, so you must have been spewed, you weren't the problem. The Hibs fans actually just remind me <laughs> on the same day every year. Um, you're looking at me, I'm, I don't know what you're total talking about. Bemusement. Well, basically, Hearts were winning 2 0 in the Scottish Cup. Was it this quarter finals at Quarter finals at 10 minutes to go. 10 minutes to go. They're 2 0 up. Hibs are looking dead and buried. And I just basically put out a tweet. Game, hearts do nothing, game over. The wake is on for the Hibbies to win the Scottish <laughs> Cup. <laughs> they come back one, they come back, drew two each, won the replay and won the Scottish Cup. <laughs> they three two, get the yeah. three two well, they come back and they win the Scottish <laughs> Cup. Well, I'm not kidding you. They absolutely steamed on. And it's now, by the way, to be fair, I haven't deleted the tweet. <laughs> That's good. I'll leave yeah, it up man. there for them because you, you've got to, if you listen, you're willing to give your opinion. If you give it out, you've got to take it in. It was absolutely fantastic and a brilliant day for the Hibbies as well. Uh, just unfortunate the whole thing that happened at, at the end of it, but nevertheless, still a brilliant day. Exuberance. Um, hey? Exuberance. Yes, over exuberance was how <laughs> was how <laughs> chairman decided to sum it up. Um, uh, did I ask you, Ruffy, just basically, and we were talking about it earlier this week, um, clearly there are players that go on loan and they get a chance to develop here in Scottish football. I don't know about you, but I, I'd love to see Hearts being able to I think Robbie Nielsen mentioned it after the cup went over Hibs. He said, I'd love to see Ellis uh, um, Sims stay on for another season if they can mm -hmm. get him on loan from Everton. That would be great. Yeah, well, he's already went on record and saying, even though the money they're going to bring in, then he's not going to splash the cash. But So if you've got players there who have come up on loan, uh, you would like to think they enjoy the environment. They would like to think they love playing at Tyne Castle. It's a great environment. And you're with a team that's getting to semi-finals and finals of Cups, which he wasn't getting anywhere else. So it's a head start when you start negotiating. He's a big battering ram as well, Richard. You know, he puts himself about. Yeah, he does, but he's quick as well. You know, I think, I think it, 
especially in the early part, I thought a lot of defenders kind of misjudged how fast he was. But I think he's got a good touch, um, scored a fantastic goal, obviously, um, in, in the derby. It just just leads the line really well, and he allows boys to drop into that pocket just behind him and Mackay. Well, I think the, the two of them prefer to play anyway, um, and 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 they look so good going forward. But he's the spearhead of that, and I think he just he causes so many problems with his pace and his power. Have you ever missed out on a cup final? Any of you? You can throw your toppings worth in here. Have you ever missed out on a cup final through injury? Because Craig Halkett, um, okay, the injury's not as bad as first. Feared, but he might miss out in the cup final. It's 50 50 for Andy Halliday, which would be a shame. It would be great to see Andy take his place in the final. Um, Stephen Kingsley looks as if he, he should be okay, but have you ever missed one because of an injury? No, I haven't, but I'll tell you a quick story of how I did miss a cup final. I was at, I was at Falkirk in the first part of the season, John Hughes, and we were playing Berwick Rangers away in the Scottish Cup, and I wasn't in the 18. So me and our boy went down, and somebody got injured. Liam Craig got injured for Falkirk, so Brian Rice phoned my phone. And I went back and sat on the bench, never got on. So I left Falkirk, I signed for Dunfermline. And I couldn't play. Dunfermline got to the final that year. Uh, get beat off of Celtic, won nothing. And I couldn't play in the final because I had been on the team sheet, even though I never got on. And we, my agent and the club, Dunfermline, all wrote a petition to SFA. And the, the, that, that rule got changed the following year. So I was the architect to get it changed. We didn't do me any good because I never got a game. year must that have been? That was before t- 2011 then, wasn't it? Aye. Because that was the same with me. Yeah. Sat on the bench for Aberdeen at Alloa. Rangers won the League Cup. Yellow scored the winner in extra time. Couldn't play. Uh, Couldn't play. Because yeah. I sat on the bench. The rules change now. You need to play. You need to play. <coughs> I mean, I, I know that your after dinner act is quite miserable at times. But is there any other jinx stories? <laughs> no. <laughs> you are a Jonah, by the way. I was 17th man in the semi final. <laughs> but Alec McLeish left me out against Celtic when the Celtic were in the trev when I was injured. Oh. Third and Fairman when they get beat in the Challenge Cup final. So. Wow. It's not. It doesn't all go well for us, does it? No. We've 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 made a lot of good signings over the ten years, and we've built from strength. Surprise! To strength. This, this company's still going. But this is this is. I think this is. I know. This is the final straw for us. I think this could be the one. I think so. Sends us over the edge of the cliff. Yes. You know? Well, obviously, if you've heard these after dinner, it is a bit depressing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. Anyway, apart from anything else, brilliant. <laughs> uh, good line, Tom. Uh, Liverpool. Oh, I mean, honestly, if clubs up here think they've got problems, Liverpool thumped Manchester yeah. United. It, it, you know, it's a, I watched the game last night, Robbie. It was embarrassing. Manchester United are a team of players that should, they're not fit to wear the jersey. Yeah, well, you've been saying that all year, and I don't think anybody can disagree with you, you know, from where they are as a club, you know, and we all know the, the players that they've had at the club and the success that they've had at the club, particularly in Europe, but they're miles away for that. And I think the supporters will just be interesting to see who it is that's going to come in and what kind of players they're going to bring in to get them back to where they were. I have to tell you, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out. I mean, I thought their their move, the big mistake they made was making Ed Woodward the chief executive. I thought he was just one disaster after another, after David Gill. David Gill, who was so good, great relationship with Sir Alex, totally understood the mechanics of the football club, even with the Glazers in charge. But now, uh, you know, and from there it was just one poor appointment after another. No signing strategy that you could say this is a long-term view on things. Um, and then, of course, that knee jerk's not working. Sack him, sack him, sack him. You know, and now look at you know you'll have to look at what David Moyes is doing with a, a you know somebody at least giving them a decent <coughs> enough time to try and do something. But their whole their whole policy of signing players and and I'll tell you, I, I, you'll have to listen to Sir Alex. I would never have brought Pogba anywhere back near Manchester United. No, he's the, he's just not he's not suited to to them at all. But I, th- I thought I listened to Gary Neville and I thought he spoke very well on the matter. And he, he says the problem they have is they sign these players who then become bigger than the manager. Now that's one thing you, you can well, one of many things about Sir Alex. No one was bigger than him. No one was bigger than the club. You know I think it was you know David Beckham obviously that then David Beckham leaves. I think they had it with Yap Stam was kind of then Keen. Yap Stam leaves. Roy Keane eventually then Roy Keane leaves because there was no one bigger than Alex Ferguson in the club. Um, and I think if you you hear Keane speak now, he respects that um, aspect of it. And I think that's got to, that's got to be the way. But you're paying these guys so much money, probably more than the managers getting paid. That why would you? What, if you're getting that money, why would you listen to that guy? You know, yeah, he's your manager, but so who cares? Yeah. And I think they're they're too selfish these players, and they clearly don't care at all about Man United. Because I, I watched that game last night. I mean, 
Harry Maguire's got the most interesting defensive technique I've ever seen. He literally, when any team are attacking him, just sprints in a straight line towards the halfway line. Regardless of where the runners are or where the ball is, he just runs away and then has to run him all the way back. And I thought, but, you know, for most of the game, they're walking about and Liverpool were, I mean, Liverpool were outstanding, but Man United were so poor, they're miles away from Liverpool. And Pogba throwing one in after five, ten minutes. Didn't fancy today. No, no, Pogba. no, absolutely not. And you're right about Edward Woodward. I think you're spot on about him as well. Yeah, you know, when when Man United are getting beat, you never think they're going to get the equaliser. Yeah, absolutely. And that is really why we are on the edge at times, Ruffy, when we wonder if we can go any higher as PLZ soccer, um, because obviously you're aware that <laughs> Woodward was the equaliser in the ninety. <laughs> Ruffy. I don't even know why I'm bothered explaining the gag to you. The gag's no, so sad. bad. Uh, yeah. You want to do it again? No, no, don't do it. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. But uh, I could see it coming, you know, I could see his face uh, desperate to deliver it. I mean, listen, even Ralph Ranick, the interim Manchester United manager, concedes Liverpool are the best team. They've got better players. I think that they have mentally checked out. It's just a different level. They, they have better players than we have if you look at it in total. And um, and this is what what reflected was was reflected by the result today. So uh, there will be a rebuild for sure, but right now that doesn't help us because we still have another five games to play. Yeah, well, um, there will be a major rebuild. The one person that I think doesn't deserve any criticism, and for some of them who did criticise him, I'm absolutely gobsmacked, was Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, whether the team was able to play. Uh, all about his style or not, he stepped up to the plate and, and scored the goals uh, that he was brought back to score. There was a one moment in that game that would have brought a tear to your eye, Ruffy, and it was the class shown by the Liverpool fans and the Manchester United oh. fans because of um, the family tragedy that Cristiano and his wife and, and all the, the, you know, Ronaldo's family are uh, suffering at the moment. But the whole stadium was was clapping for him, and I, and I just thought that was a touch of class. That's a good side of supporters. You know, we've obviously seen another side of supporters. When something like this happens, they seem to all unite together, and it's a fantastic sight to see, and I wish it would happen more often. Yeah, absolutely, and even Jurgen Klopp was quick to praise everyone. Of the game, even when it was very important and a great result, was the seventh minute when our people showed pure class and um, the whole stadium together um, showed pure class. Uh, in a moment where we, obviously, everybody knew since yesterday, since I heard first time about it, uh, um, there's so many things that are much more important in life than than football. And obviously, we, we really feel for for Cristiano and his family. Yeah, well said. Klopp's a class act anyway. If anybody wants to understand what the blueprint is for <coughs> Manchester United, you just go and read Patrick Barclay's book on Sir Matt Busby. You just go and read any book from Alex, Sir Alex Ferguson. You know, you build your team, you show a bit of a long-term plan, you invest in the youth, you get a good goalkeeper, two good centre-halves, spine of your team with a midfield and a striker, and then the sprinkling of gold dust around it. It's not rocket science, and they play with wingers. Sir Matt Busby did it. So did Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah, you've got to have a strong spine, and my uncle did have that, you know, with Bruce Michael, you know, Pallister, Bruce, you know, Keane in the middle of the pitch, the young boys were brought through. Even with Liverpool, we, when they got beat off of Real Madrid in the final, the only thing they were lacking was a goalkeeper. And they went and signed probably the best goalkeeper in the world, you know, and, and you know, that's the spine of Liverpool's team at the minute is, is unbelievable as well. So a strong spine, and you get wee bits of magic around about that, and my United are, are spineless, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's fantastic. He's just doing the whole act now. It's just outrageous. <laughs> just, yeah. he's, uh, he's brilliant. Um, listen, uh, there's that some... Gag, I missed that gag. No, was it a gag there? Was it was, just it was like a just... small one. Um, <laughs> English Premier League fixtures. Don't, I don't want to explain it to you, Ruffy. Uh, here's the fixtures. Um, it's Man City, Brighton, Everton, Leicester, Chelsea, Arsenal, Newcastle, Crystal Palace. And Thursday, it's Burnley against Southampton. Uh, I don't know, I hope Burnley are down. How, I, I'm, I'm now into pub punditry, you know, but when you, if you sack Sean Dyche, I mean, come on, we're up here arguing about Hibs sacking Sean Maloney, which is ridiculous, but Sean Dyche is embarrassing for Burnley. I mean, I don't know what more they expect of the guy to keep him in the Premier League as long as they have on the budget that he, he's on, which is, you know, dwarfed by even the teams around about him, I think. Um, and I just... I just think, what is it, five games, four or five games to go, something like that. Um, at least let him 
you know, at least have a chat with them at the end of the season, regardless of what happens and where, where they finish. Have a chat with them at the end of the season and allow them, you know, to kind of leave the club and you know in good spirits. Whereas this just, like you say, it just leaves a sour taste. You just think you, you do get that, and I know it's it's quite petty, but you do think because you've got nothing really invested in it, you think, yeah, I hope you treat a, a, a person like that. Like, I hope you go down, and I, I'm, I, I get like that with certain things as well, and, that, and that's certainly one of them. Yeah, absolutely. On this day, Ruffy, in 2018, it just shows you. <laughs> I, listen, Cheryl and I, Cheryl and I put this in for you because we like this feature because you, you embrace it. I don't expect you to know it. All I'm saying to you um, is Arsene Wenger announced the end of his 21-year reign at Arsenal. It just shows you how difficult it is to replace. Top drawer managers. I, th I thought they maybe could have replaced him a wee bit earlier, but that's neither here nor there. Um, three Premier League titles, seven FA Cups, seven sh uh, Community Shields, and of course he got them to the Champions League final with the loss to Barcelona. Yeah, well, he was another Sir Alec Ferguson, wasn't he? He ran the whole show, you know, and I think the the supporters would credit him for him for the new stadium and everything, but certainly get him credit for some of the players he brought to the club at the height. Yeah. You know, they were absolutely wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, who's the best of them that you... I like Vieira. I thought Vieira was magnificent. Bergkamp. Henri. Yeah, Henry Bergkamp was, was brought there by Bruce Riok. Um, Henri. Henri was outstanding. In fact, I think he was a central striker when he came in, wasn't he? And, and mm -hmm. Wenger played him out on the left. Yeah. Um, and he, he just... Yeah, he was fantastic. The goals he scored were ridiculous. Yeah. Um, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, Richard, uh, Rangers have now got to the Scottish Cup final. Uh, they'll play Hearts in it. Um, and Rangers have got a, you know, a big a week coming up next week. They've got a lot of fixtures in there. Um, the weekend, is there going to be a twist? It's the first time we've had a chance to chat to you. Will there be a twist, do you think, because Rangers really um, stepped up to the plate and, and defeated Celtic? Could there be a twist now in the in the, the league, in the race for the league? Could they reignite their campaign? Is there something that could happen at Dingwall between Ross County and Celtic? I mean, there certainly is a chance, but I think the way Celtic have been this season from where they started to now, one thing they've done is they've got important results at the right moments. Um, and the weekend is certainly that moment. They need to go up there and bounce back from the, the cup exit because it was, you know, before the game, I thought Celtic were huge favourites. Rangers went to extra time. Um, and then in extra time on Sunday, Rangers looked like the fitter team, the hungrier side. They, they created the better opportunities going forward. I thought Celtic were, by their standards, were poor. Um, you know, I, I don't think Bobby Madden had a good game. But yeah. I think don't say that by me. You'll be accused of being. <laughs> no, no. Oh no, it's gone mental. They're all going. Oh, they're going bananas. <laughs> by regardless way. of that, I think regardless <laughs> of that, I still think um, Rangers would have won the game because, like I say, they just they just had better. They, they created better situations in the game and they, they looked more dangerous in attack. I thought Jota was was quite poor. Maeda never really got much service. Um, Kyogo came on and, and never really. Like ignited a spark that they were hoping for, and and full credit to Rangers for going 120 minutes, you know, in, in the space of what four days. I mean, and some of the guys out there who played all the minutes, you know, Bassi, Tavernier, they looked they looked as fresh at the end of the game as they did at the start. And credible um, engines on the on those two, but I think I think there'll be a, a dramatic improvement from Celtic at the weekend. I think they'll bounce back from from that cup shock, and I think they'll beat County. Yeah, OK. Always good to get your opinion on these things. Just before we go, um, uh, we always like to do it on this day with Ruffy, but on this day yesterday, it had been such a long time me waiting to defeat Ruffy at tennis time. I mean, it was, it was, I'm talking a lot of games. I spent about 10 grand in lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I'm offering... Ruffy's seven, I played golf him. If, if I'm, if I'm, <laughs> off, if I'm offering... <laughs> If I'm offering a lesson to, to young kids out there, is just keep at it. Keep, coaches, spend fortunes. Let him beat you. I mean, honestly. No, he played well. He played really well. He played golf at the yeah, yeah. He must have been tired. Yeah. Ruffy, Did Ruffy. you deserve to win, though? No, no, not at all. No, no. that was Ru poor. The Ru caller said you deserve to win. No. I, I think, I think, just one wee. And I think I love, the one thing I love about you being a sports person. I know you hate to lose, but you're a, you're, you're magnanimous in defeat. There, you, you said I played well, and then you asked the question. Just that one wee glitch where you oh. said, "No, I, did, I didn't play well." No, was it not more a case of I didn't allow you to play well? No, I thought you played well. There was a one particular. It was five four, right? Very very crucial point. You know, really crucial point. And I, I played a shot, and he shouts out. Known quite well, it was in. <laughs> you have to call it. No, you dealt with it. I, I would have said, 
a couple of weeks and a month ago, the racket had been off. Oh, <laughs> we didn't even know over yeah. the place. The racket not, was too expensive yeah, to yes. throw down now, <laughs> yeah. Ruffy. No, I'm you learned. were very disciplined. You deserve to uh, win. I learned He's thrown about 17 and a half grand <laughs> at lessons, yeah, rackets. Honestly. And by the way, any, can I say, <clears throat> any kids out there, if you can get Ivan Lendl in a two week window and just pay for him, <laughs> pay for him. it's as simple as that. Um, to be honest with you, though, <laughs> Richard, he's played golf for hours in the morning. Yeah. I thought, if I'm not getting him now, I'm never getting him. Well, you know, when you're someone like Ruffy, you've had the success he has, you've got to uh, fight on all fronts, you've got to win all competitions. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Just, you won the it. golf, didn't we? It was a nightmare having to wear the blindfold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, we enjoy talking about the football. We hope you do too. Um, I, I wonder if we've got time to show you just the competition because obviously from our point of view, it's a great chance uh, for you to basically ask Geo Thompson to paint your favourite player because all we want you to do is have a listen to Kerry Pollock and find out how you can win this prize. PLZ Soccer and Geo Thompson have teamed up to offer you this fabulous prize. All you have to do is name your favourite player for Geo to paint a unique and one-off version for you to hang on your wall. It's a simple competition to enter. All you have to do is hit the like and share button, follow us on Facebook or subscribe to the PLZ Soccer YouTube channel to win this magnificent prize. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. That's a great prize for people who love football. Not really for Richard. He doesn't want to win it anyway. Um, he doesn't have a year old who played football. But we all do. Uh, so we're entering. You can enter too. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. You'll get the notifications. If you download the PLZ Soccer app, you'll get all the breaking football stories and you can watch our programme live. If you go onto PLZ Soccer's Facebook page, the competition is pinned to the top of our page and you can enter there as well as posting your favourite player on our feed here Could be today asked probably well. for me. Could be asked. Could yeah, be asked. A yep. great shout from 19. What a great player he yeah, was. Yeah. Um, I couldn't take free kicks apparently until <laughs> the game against Scotland. Anyway, <laughs> apart from anything else. That during goal. I don't need a print. I've got his jersey. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to criticise him. <laughs> I've got his jersey. I've seen it, I've seen it on the frame. Yeah, and my birthday's coming up soon. <laughs> anyway, apart from anything else, from Ruffy, from Richard, uh, Tam McManus and myself, Peter Martin, thanks for watching.